Hi, welcome to this presentation of our work, Descriptive Complexity of Real Computation and Probabilistic Independence Machine. I will be presenting this work together with our co-author, Janni Virtama, and my name is Mika Hanula. The logic that we studied in this paper is part of the growing family of modern logics of dependence and independence. The point here is to take some base logic, such as first order logic, and combine it with some collection of mobile dependency atoms that describe some elementary dependence relations between, say, first order variables. The objective of this approach is to extend the expressivity of classical logics in order to be able to analyze and reason about complex dependence phenomena in diverse fields. Historically, this approach has been preceded by formalisms which, has, which have instead considered having a richer quantification of variables. Here in this paper, we follow this modern stream of research and investigate the complexity of first order logic extended with conditional independence, as it is understood in probability theory. The basis of probabilistic independence logic and all modern logics of dependence and independence is team semantics. Team semantics is a formalism which enables one to evaluate dependent statements about sets of objects. These sets of objects, depending on the context, may be comprised of assignments or possible words and so forth. Then these new atoms are in this setting some elementary dependent statements about these sets. For instance, <coughs> we can have a statement which says that some variable in a team functionally determines another variable in the team using connective quantifiers and possibly model operators one can then construct complex dependent statements out of atomic ones. The notions of dependence and independence are crucial in many areas of science. What is interesting here is that theme logics can actually be used to express many central theorems in these fields and moreover to formally prove these theorems. For instance, the celebrated Arrow's theorem from social choice theory has been recently formalized in the context of so-called independence logic, which extend first order logic with relational independence. However, extending first order logic with additional dependence features comes with a price. That is that the complexity of the logic becomes very high. For instance, determining whether a given theme logic sentence is valid or not is typically of non-arithmetical complexity. Thus, there cannot be any hope for a full-fledged proof full system that is sound and complete for these logics, and instead one has to determine partial solutions to particular reasoning problems. Theme logics, as they have been developed over the, over the years, have been designed to address only qualitative notions of dependencies. Often these notions originate or have parallels in relational database theory. For instance, the functional dependency and inclusion dependency, which are crucial in database theory, also are the two core atoms in team logics. However, in many areas, central notions of dependence and independence make genuine use of quantities. For instance, in order to determine whether a conditional independence between random variables holds, one has to calculate some actual probabilities of random variables. So in order to address also analyzing and reasoning about quantitative notions of dependence, we have recently introduced the concept of a probabilistic team. And in this setting, we've been able to also accommodate various quantitative atoms together with connectives and quantifiers for complex probability statements. And this approach 
has interesting parallels in separation logic. Separation logic is formalism reason about programs, and it has interesting parallels with team logic. For instance, the central notion of separation logic is the concept of a heap, which in the team logic side can be understood as a functional team. And moreover, there have been recent studies about extending separation logic to probabilistic and quantitative reasoning, which has some parallels to our work. Next, let us look at an example of using our logic. Here we have a Bayesian network comprising of four nodes, one node for one random variable. From the topology of su such network, one readily obtains a factorization of the underlying joint probability distribution. Alternatively, we see that this factorization reflects the conditional independencies which are encoded in such networks. And these conditional independencies can be seen as atomic statements of our probabilistic independence logic. But this probabilistic independence logic can also be viewed as a more general specification language for probability distributions. For instance, if you have a formula which states that whenever t is false, then guard is false, then we obtain that the two bottom rows of the probability table for guard are redundant because they are already encoded in the formula itself. Similarly, we can use novel probabilistic atoms to capture more elaborate features of prob probabilistic dependence. This formula here says that conditions on T and cat, alarm and guard are identically distributed. From this it follows that one conditional probability table becomes redundant because it is identical with another one. Using quantifiers and connectives, it is possible to construct even more elaborate ways to specify how the joint distribution can be decomposed further. Another interesting direction is to consider the implication problem for conditional independence. Over finite probability distributions, this problem is known to be in the X space if restricted to binary domains. This follows from our work from last year. Using analogous ideas, Hamis et al. have shown that the general problem is in sigma zero one. And their paper actually appears in the sister conference of Rix 2020, which is ICAL. The desirability of this problem is open, but what is interesting is that this problem is readily representable as a decision problem of probabilistic independence logic, which itself is complete for phi zero one. If to see this one can use similar methods that have been used to prove these two theorems. Next, let us take a look at how probabilistic independence logic is actually defined. The syntax comprises negation norma from first order logic together with positive conditional independence statements. The semantics is defined in terms of a finite structure and a probabilistic theme, which is simply a probability distribution over a finite theme that is over a set of variable assignments with a shared domain, a finite set. What follows from this is that we can give a traditional interpretation for conditional independence over probabilistic themes. For FO literals and complex statements, we define the semantics as follows. An FO literal is true if and only if it has probability one. And for conjunction, we define it classically. A disjunction of psi and theta is true for a probabilistic theme if and only if it is a mixture of two prob probabilistic themes with respective properties psi and theta. For quantification, we need to introduce a new column for the quantified variable. 
in terms of existential quantification, this new variable may be distributed in an arbitrary way. For universal quantification, we stipulate that this new variable is uniformly distributed and independent of all other variables. Thanks, Mika, for the nice introduction. So next, we are going to move to the central topic of our paper, which is a descriptive complexity of probabilistic independence logic. And I wanted to first give a short introduction to the topic of descriptive complexity. So the idea in descriptive complexity is to give a machine-independent characterization of complexity classes. So we shift from the time and space bounds of some uh, computational device like Turing machines or register machines, and we shift to the richness of the logical languages needed for describing these problems. And then one of the idea in descriptive complexity theory is that we could then separate complexity classes by separating the logics. So during the last uh, decades, there has been, of course, many characterizations of many, many different logics. But the starting bang for this endeavor was done by Fagin in the beginning of the 70s, where he characterized that existential second logic characterizes NP. So uh, a problem can be decided in non-deterministic polynomial time if and only if it can be described in existential second logic. And uh, starting from Fagin's seminal result, there has been a, an explosion of different characterizations in the past decades. And uh, I just mentioned here the characterization of polynomial time on order structures by a least fixed point logic. Also, results on a descriptive complexity of team based logic exists. So, for example, independence logic is known to be equi expressive to existential secondary logic. And hence, it captures NP. And inclusion logic has been proven to capture polynomial time on ordered structures. So these results are all on, on classical complex classes, uh, on classical structures. So, but they do not seem to relate to probabilistic team logics. Because as you saw in Mika's talk, in probabilistic team logics, the central notion is a probabilistic team, which is a function from the finite domain to real numbers. And it seems that we would need some kind of computation device that could uh, work on real numbers directly. And indeed, there is such a device, which is called uh, bloom schubs main machines, or BSS machines in short. We can use BSS machines to decide languages which are strings of real numbers. So what is a BS machine? So you can think it as a, as a register machine. So where we have one B infinite tape and each cell in that tape contain a real number. And then we can do arithmetic operations on real numbers in unit step. So a program of a PSS machine is just a list of instructions where we have arithmetic instructions that, that can be used to manipulate the tape, the contents of the tape. And then we have shift left and shift right instructions, which essentially correspond to moving the head of a Turing machine, if you wish. And then we have a branch rule, which enables, depending on, uh, on the content of the tape, to branch on the computation. So depending on the content of the zeroth cell, the next uh, instruction differs. So here you can see how an input is put to a BSS machine. So, so here we depict the B infinite tape of a BSS machine. And if we get this input here, what we do is that we put the length of the input to the zeroth cell, and then we Starting from that, we put the contents of the input to the rest of the cells. So that each, each cell gets exactly one real number in it. And all of the rest of the cells contain zero. And once we reach the last instruction of our program, we get an output. And the output we now define is just the real number that um, is in the first coordinate. And since we are only now considering decision problems, 
we assume that it is always either 0 or 1. And then we have the instructions that modify the content of the of the tape. And then we had the, for example, here we have addition, and then we had the multiplication and the difference. So here the idea is that, for example, this, this instruction says that on the cell indexed by number two, we put the sum of the content of the cells indexed by minus three. So here are two and zero are five. So then the cell indexed by two will contain the real number R2 plus R5. And then we had assignment instructions. And here this says that in the cell indexed by minus three, we assign the real constant C1. And this is now a constant real number, which we call a machine constant. Okay, and then we have the shift left, and we also have the shift right instruction. So in the shift left instruction, what we do is that we move every every content one step left. So for example, here, R2 is moved from minus one to minus four. And this is a very important instruction since all the other instructions here work on some predetermined indices. So how about non-deterministic complexity classes on the BSS machine? So we implement a non-determinism by guessing a certificate. Now the idea is that a language belongs to NPR if and only if there is a BSS machine M such that for any input of, of string of real numbers X, it belongs to the language, if and only if there exists a certificate Y, a string of real numbers such that the machine accepts get the concatenation of X and Y in polynomial time with respect to the size of X. There are many interesting complete problems for this complexity class, but one example is the question to decide for a given polynomial of degree four, does there exist a real root for the polynomial? Descriptive complexity on BSS machines is not a new topic. It has been done already by Gredel and Mayer in the mid nineties. And there they relate logics on so-called R structures with computation with BSS machines. And these R structures are really close to what we define in this talk as probabilistic teams. So an R structure consists of a finite structure together with an ordered field of reals and a finite set of weight fu functions from the finite domain to real numbers. So for example, here, there's an example of a R structure. So the finite model here would be just the four points, Hassel, Saarbrück, and Helsinki, and Sapporo. And now we have one binary weight function, which maps each pair of cities to the distance of those cities. So here we have arbitrary functions from the finite domain to the reals. And a probabilistic team was just a particular R structure where the function is a probability distribution. Okay, so what did Gredel and Lamer show was that they characterized NPR with this uh, two shortage existential second logic on R structures. So the point here is that we have first the logic on the finite structure side, and then we have numerical terms on the on the real numbers. So first of all, we have existence of quantification of functions from from the finite domain to the reals. Then we have constant symbol for each real, and then we can construct more complex numerical terms by using the functions of addition and multiplication. And then we can create atoms by using the inequality symbol between numerical terms. Okay, so our logic lacks negation, and then also the quantification, which was uh, quantification as probability distributions, seems weaker than the logic of Gale and Mayer. So, we think that in, in, in order to find the right complexity class for our logic, we have to define some fragment of NPR. And that's exactly what we do. So we define a, rest, a, a restriction of the BSS model of computation, which we call a separated branching BSS machine, which is exactly the same as a BSS machine, except that we modify the branching rule 
to have this kind of separate branching rule. So the point here is that here we have two fixed real numbers. And if the content of the serial cell is less or equal to the first real number, we go to alpha. If it's larger than the second one, we go to beta. But in the between, we just have to reject. So it's a branching to a two, two different disjoint closed sets. And that indeed is a weaker condition than the arbitrary branching that we had on the BSS machine. OK, and then we define also this complexity class here, which is just defined similarly as NPR, except that we restrict the certificate to be a string of real numbers between 0 and 1. And then we use SBS machines instead of BSF machines. And this is the main result of our paper. So what we get is that we characterized our logic here with a fragment of the logic of Gradle and Mayer. And we prove that that logic characterizes this complexity class here. So what is this fragment of ESOR? Well, first of all, we, we disallow the use of negated atoms between two numerical terms. And then we say that the existential second law quantifications has to be functions from the domain to the interval 0 and 1. And now note that the values of the terms can still be outside of this interval since we have the functions of, functions of plus and times in the logic still. And then we also restricted the machine so that only machine constants 0 and 1 are allowed. So now that we have this characterization, we would like to know that what is the difference between these two complexity classes? So have we found a new complexity class? And indeed we have. And what we do is that we give a characterization of SBSS decidable languages. So an old result by Bloom et al. characterize that Every language which is decidable by a BS machine is a countable disjoint union of semi algebraic sets. And what we show here is something stronger. So we show that every language which is decidable by a deterministic SBS machine or a time bounded 0 1 non deterministic SBS machine is a countable disjoint union of closed sets in the usual topology of Rn. OK, so what do we mean by time-bounded 0, 1, non deterministic SPS machines? Well, essentially, we mean classes like this, where the certificates are guessed in the interval 0 and 1. And then we, we restrict that the computation time of the machine is restricted by some function of the length of x. And the function doesn't ha even have to be computable, but some function has to exist. OK, so how do we prove this result? Well, essentially, we use two lemmas. So the first lemma says that if we restrict the length of, uh, of strings to some constant, and then we also restrict the running time of an SPS machine to some other constant, then we can describe the languages accepted by m that are of length n and accepted in time at most t, we can describe that language by a formula of existential first order logic on the real field. And then we show that every relation defined by a formula of that sort it is closed in Rn. Okay, and, and this gives a separation of, of these complexity classes. Since we can show that in NPR, there are properties that does not have this, this property of being closed in Rn. And indeed, this gives even a, um, a stronger result. So we can replace this piece of polynomial by any, any time bound function whatsoever. And we still don't get the whole of NPR. So the separation result holds also for the machines where the only machine constants allowed are 0 and 1. So what we get here is that 
on, on formally the, the descriptive complexity of probabilistic independence logic is strictly below NPR zero. Okay, so the last question is then what happens with sentences of our logic? Because now the sentences again would would describe the classes of finite structures. So we could again relate that to a classical complexity classes. And indeed, we do so by by relating our, our logic to a, to a complexity class called exist R. So the existence of the theory of the reals consists of all true sentences of this form of real arithmetic. And then we get a complexity class by closing this problem by polynomial time reductions. And what we end up is a complexity class which lies somewhere between NP and P space. And also that has many, many natural complete problems, such as the alt calorie problem or recognition of the unit distance graphs. So what is known before is that exist R is the same complexity class as the Boolean part of NPR zero, which is now the restriction of, of NPR with, for Boolean inputs and machine constant zero and one. And what's also known that it, it, it uh, connects to this existence of second logic by, by the result of Graden and Mayer. So again, it seems that this exit R is a bit too strong for our logic. And indeed, we need to define um, an analogous weakening of exist R as we did for the weakening of ESOR. So we do essentially the same restrictions. So we restrict that uh, the quantification of the first set of variables have to be between zero and one. And then we also disallow the use of negation or street inequalities. And what we now get is that over finite structures, the descriptive complexity of probabilistic independence logic is exactly this complexity class. And now, of course, one open problem is, is this a new complexity class? So does it coincide with NP or exist R for some reason? And that is an open question. And of course, if we would separate it from this, it would separate also NP from P space. So separation might be difficult, but it might still be possible to show that it collapses to, to NP, for example, or that exist R collapses to, to it. Okay, so what, we did, what did we do here? So we studied the descriptive complexity of probabilistic independence logic, and we characterized it in two different ways. So first, logically, by, by defining a weakening of ESOR, and then computationally using a novel SPSS machine. And then we show that over finite structures, we correspond to a, to a bounded fragment of exist R. Then we show the topological result, which characterizes the full SPSS computation and shows it to be weaker than VSS computation. So we end up with a couple of open questions. So the first one I mentioned already, so what is, what is this complexity class? Can we prove something about it? And then another thing would be to define some nice complete problems for the complexity class. Of course, there are also many other open problems, but, but these are, here are two. Okay, thanks a lot for following, and, and, and you can find these slides at my, my website.